गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स टुडे विल स्टार्ट विद इलेक्ट्रोस्टैटिक पार्ट टू सो विल कंटिन्यू फ्रॉम कंडक्टर्स एंड इंसुलेटर्स कंडक्टर्स एंड इंसुलेटर्स ओके नाउ ऑल ऑफ यू नो दैट कंडक्टर्स आर दोज विच कंडक्ट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी विच पास इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो कंडक्टर्स आर बेसिकली वी हैव लाइक कॉपर आयरन ऑल मेटल्स एंड दे कंडक्ट और पास इलेक्ट्रिसिटी सो दे अलाउ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी पास ओके दोज आर नॉन एज कंडक्टर्स एंड वी नो दैट दे हैव कैरियर्स free electrons okay now the next is insulators now all of you know insulators they don't pass electricity and generally we know that plastic uh, nylon these are the insulators and they doesn't allow they doesn't allow electricity to pass okay no free electrons no free electrons though we have semiconductor also not mentioned in this uh, unit we know that semiconductor silicon germanium which we also known as metalloids so semiconductor silicon and germanium and they partially allow electricity to pass though we will go through semiconductor in detail and they have electrons and holes as their charge carrier or current carrier so conductors and insulators are these three type and even when we talk about conductors and insulator there is a earthing also when we say grounding sharing of the charge to the earth is known as earthing that we already know now we are coming to the uh, basic properties of charge fundamental properties of charge and uh, when we talk about fundamental properties of electric charge so we know that th three th three properties are there and what are those very simple we have quantization of charge quantization of charge second is additivity of charge or you can say additivity of charges then we have the third one conservation of charge so these are the three properties of fundamental properties of uh, charges now what is quantization now if i say quantization i think all of you know the word quanta quanta means the smallest packets bundles of light so any charge q can be written as in the form of plus minus any where n is the number of what electrons here so q can be written as plus minus any you can find out n and n can be q by e so this is quantization say for example if i have q equal to 1.6 micro coulomb i want to find out n so q is what any e. so n can be written as q by e and then q is what 1.6 micro micro is 10 to the power minus 6 and what is the charge of electron 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 13 so if you solve it out it becomes 10 to the power 13 so if you see this this one q equal to plus minus any this is very important this is known as quantization of charge we can quantized any big charge in the form of plus minus any now after that we have 
additivity of charges now what is additivity of charges uh, when we talk about additivity of charges okay so additivity of charges you know that any charge q it is it can be the sum of q1 plus q2 plus q3 so on plus dash 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 qn as charge is a scalar quantity okay so it can add like numbers you know that is scalar you can add it like numbers say i have a charge 1 micro coulomb plus 2 micro coulomb plus 3 micro coulomb what will be that complete charge is 6 micro coulomb but if i have a charge say 2q minus 4q plus 6q so what is the net charge is that it is 6q plus 2q 8q minus 4q so it is 4q charge so it is the property of additivity of the charges and last one is the conservation now conservation of charge all of you know that charge can neither be created nor be destroyed charge remains conserved you know that subatomic particles charge remains conserved okay so uh, the charge if you just rub we have already told glass rod rubbed with silk cloth what happened do you remember do you remember glass rod attains positive charge okay and silk attains negative charge but do you know the net charge is conserved net charge of the system is conserved so net charge is conserved okay now i can you i can give you another example on this is that conservation 92u238 it breaks down into if you see it is in alpha decay it becomes 90u 90 thorium TH 234 plus 1 helium particle. So what we see is that the number remains same, atomic number remains same. That means initial and uh, initially and after the decay, the Q remains what? Conserved. So this is another example where we can say that charge remains conserved. So these are the three fundamental properties of charge. Now there comes a word charging have you heard about the charging charging means electrification of a body so you know charging when you charge any body like mobile charging like charging through friction charging through conduction and charging through induction so we have three types of charging one is charging by friction one is charging by what conduction and the most important is charging by induction so we have three type of charging one is charging by friction charging by conduction and charging by induction so charging means electrification of the body so we are going to discuss these three but this one is more important charging by induction now charging by friction is uh, what already we have gone through charging by friction when you rub uh, your hand when you rub the comb on dryers it is charging by friction so we know that the rubbing of bodies can exchange the charge so that is charging uh, of friction or charging by friction and uh, example i am seeing again giving glass rod rubbed with silk cloth this is again the example we will give the same example with silk cloth so we know that glass rod attains what positive charge so it was by friction so we know that charging by friction is this. So we have number of example of charging by friction. You can find out number of 
activities based on this which we can do in the lab we have the activity related with the comb we have the activity related with the balloons so that is charging by friction then comes charging by conduction now charging by conduction can be done you know that when an uncharged body is in contact with charged body is in contact with charged body so that is charging by conduction like we know that mobile charging now mobile charging is what directly you connect it so that's a conduction now that is the efficient method you know that efficient method is by doing conduction right now so mobile charge when you do a mobile charging or mobile charge you know that that's a conduction method like even the gold leaf experiment you know that you touched it and that the charge was transferred to the gold leaves so that was just a charging by conduction now comes the most important is the charging by induction now charging by induction is what you know that induction when you when you connect when you have two bodies and two bodies are when they are placed and they are nearer to one another and one gets charged due to the other by just taking it in contact so we will i'm going to explain is charging by induction just listen here and how it is going to happen we have two bodies say a and b okay a and b so this is a this is b right now they are separated now they are in contact like this and they are in contact and they are with the you know that with the insulating stand these are the insulating stand now what do you do you bring a glass rod you bring a glass rod near to these two bodies which are in contact you see interesting thing that what happens that these are the uncharged bodies uncharged body means ne same number of positive and negative charge same number of positive and negative charge so we have two bodies here a and b so what will happen all the negative will come on this side why because this rod is positive but it will throw away all the positive charge on the other one are you getting it so in this way the negative one collects here and positive one is repelled back then what do you do you do that you just separate these two bodies now very interesting you separate a and b you will find that the negative charge is here and in this we have positive charge and the rod is here only okay and then what happens you remove the rod and you just separate these two bodies so what do we see that the negative charge is uniformly distributed on it later on and the positive charge is also uniformly distributed on it so we see that there earlier there were two uncharged bodies a and b now they have become charged and they have what they have got they have got oppositely charged so this is one method of charging by what what induction you can induce a charge without taking in contact so this is the first step this is the second one this is the third and this is the fourth so uncharged body these are the uncharged bodies and they get charged this is charging by induction so another way is that you can do it in other way also say you have one body okay again the same thing it's uncharged with a uncharged metallic sphere but with a insulating stand now what do you do you again take a rod near it uh say a negative rod this time you take a negative rod so what will happen do you know do you know now all the 
positive charge will come on this side are you getting and negative will go on that side so what happens after that what do you do that you put earthing on this side this side why because this is a bounded charge this is a bounded charge are you getting it this is a bounded charge but this is a free charge so what will happen free charge will come down and it is now earthing and then in the next step you know that this is negative and now this has only what positive charge because free charge have gone down and after that you remove this rod what will happen tell me this charge will get again uniformly distributed so how uncharged body becomes a charged body by by what induction so this is how the three methods have been explained what is charging by friction charging by conduction and charging by induction charging by induction you know again there are two bodies they first are connected this is the uncharged bodies but they are having insulating stand and then this is a rod you know that all the negative charge come on this side and that positive one goes on that side and then you know that this is positive this is negative will attract on this side you just separate them then you get one charged is negative another is uncharged you can do it with a single body also so you can find out that how this induction is done in this method so later on we'll discuss all things after in the next session